So React hooks can be a really good way to accelerate your workflow if you know how to use them properly. In this video, let's go over my two favorite most used React hooks, which are one, the use hover that lets you know whenever an element in the DOM is being hovered, and then two, use on click outside, probably the hook I've used the most in my production projects, especially useful for something like models, but you can use it in a lot of ways. So let's go check them out. Full credit where credit is due though. I got them from a website called it's called usehooks.com. That's where I found them. I didn't write them myself. Let's take a look at them and how they can help you in your next project. Okay, so this is the project I've prepared. It looks hella ugly, I'm well aware, but it is enough to demonstrate the point of the hooks I'm gonna make. So we have a left and the right section and a grid with two columns, and that is pretty much it. And that will be enough to demonstrate the hooks for you. The hook we're gonna start with is called use hover. And if we get rid of this and get rid of that, now we can decide which element do we want to monitor a hover on. For example, if we wanted to see if the left side of the grid is hovered, then we could make use of the hook we have right here. And I'm going to go into the hook in detail in just a second. But first, let's take a look at how it works. So. As you can see, what does the hook return? It returns a ref and a value. So we can destructure that right here and let's call it ref and is hovered. And that's equal to use hover that we also import from this file right here. Now, if you're not familiar with TypeScript, this might look a bit weird. Um, if you've never worked with, you know, like generics, but essentially what the use hover hook expects is a ref and a ref in React or in XJS is basically a link to a certain HTML element in the DOM. So say, for example, if we want to monitor if this div right here is hovered, then first off, we would have to create a ref for that and assign it to this div. So let's give that a shot. Let's uh, use ref snippet. And let's call it left column ref because that's what it is. It will be assigned to the div and the left column. This ref is going to be null by default, but when it is assigned the current value, so when this component is rendered, then it will be the HTML div element because we are going to assign it to this div right here. If we were to assign it to an h1, for example, I've never done that um, heading that would be an HTML, HTML heading element, for example. But we're going to keep it at the div element. And then the way you assign the ref is by going to the div or whatever you want to assign it to, type ref, and then you can assign the ref. And this means when the component renders, the ref will be initialized and put right here. And we can pass that to the use hover. Nice. And now if we log out these values, so Let's call it ref and is hovered and spit those out in the console. We can now see if we go to the console, delete that. If it's hovered, it's set to true. I'm going to make this a bit larger so you can see better. Um, and if we move the mouse out of that div we assigned the ref to, then the hovered will be false right here. True and false. And that's just uh, really handy, you know. Um, you can abstract that logic into a hook, which we've done right here, and then use it across all the components you have in your project. And that is where hooks really shine. I'm obviously going to link the hooks in the description so you don't uh, have to type this out. No worries. Let's just uh, quickly go over how this hook works. So we're initializing state as a you know, React hook that is provided to us. And we can use that uh, state because we call this use. Because as you might know, all custom hooks that you want have to start with a use. And then first off in the use effect, so whenever the ref.current changes, first it's null, and then it will be assigned this uh, left column ref. So whenever that happens, this use effect right here is run and attaches the event listener of mouse over and mouse out. And whenever the mouse enters, then we're setting the state to true. Whenever the mouse um, exits the element, then we're setting the state to false. And this is the state we're giving back. And then receiving here as is hovered, essentially creating a really small but very handy 
hook that we can use to monitor if an element is hovered or not. Now, the second hook is even more useful and I've used it a lot of times in my production projects, especially in models, it can be really helpful. And let's take a look at that hook. It's called use on click outside, also typed out in TypeScript. And this hook expects two things. So the ref as a first element, just like the use hover. And then um, in contrast to the use hover, it also expects a handler. So let's call the hook right here, use on click outside and pass it the left, um, left column ref as the first parameter. And then as the second parameter, it expects a handler. So whatever should happen when we click outside of the ref we have just passed. So let's say const handler is equal to a function that says console log clicked outside and pass that handler as a second argument right here. The left column ref doesn't exist anymore. So we need to, oops, use ref. We need to create that again. Left column uh, ref, ref like that. Initialize that as null. And then it's gonna be an HTML div element as I explained earlier. Okay, and with that set, um, we can see what happens. So we expect that whenever we click outside of the ref we have defined right here in the DOM, then the console should log out clicked outside. And we need to save that first. And let's see what happens. Can remove all that and let's click right here. And it says clicked outside, nice. And when we click in here, nothing happens. When we click the heading, nothing happens. So if we click any child of whatever we assigned the ref to, nothing will happen. But if we click something that is outside of that, then it will, as you can see here, very small. Um, it increases the number of logs of how many times we have clicked outside. Perfect, that is exactly what we wanted. And now let's take a short look at how this hook works under the hood. Whenever we call the hook from, from right here, the use on click outside, then to the document, there will be a, a mouse down and to a touch start listener edit, touch start for mobile and mouse down for desktop devices. And then the listener will be called whenever, you know, we click. Now the listener checks if the event that is passed to the listener from right here, because this automatically passes an event to the listener, it's called event. So we also need to call it that. Um, which is a mouse event. And that mouse event also has a target. That target is what wherever we click. So say that heading, for example, is the um, target, this heading right here. And then it checks, is this heading inside of the div we have defined via the ref, right? It does that right here. If element contains that target, so if this div right here contains the heading one, then, you know, do nothing, but else, and this else means that you clicked somewhere that doesn't contain, um, that is not contained within this div. So for example, this div or anything else, pretty much, then we run the handler and only then. And this hook can be really useful when having, for example, models, right? We can define a model. Let's just uh, return a div give it a class name of absolute inset zero and bg, uh, bg of black. Inside of that, we're gonna have a div that's gonna be aspect square and height of say 40. And that is just gonna have a h3 of hello world with a text white. So we have that model. We will render that model um, right here. Let's just uh, insert the fragment, have the model. And then we want to open the model by default, which it will be. So this would be the, the model, which is very ugly. But let's say whenever we click, actually let's, uh, let's, uh, just center this item center justify center so the text will be in the middle and whenever we click outside the text then we want the model to close right 
Um, so how do we go about that? Well, we could um, have a state that controls whether the mod model is open or not. Model open, it's gonna be boolean, it's gonna be false by default. We also need to import the state from React. Now, this model will be open if the model open state is set to true. And then we're gonna render that. And whenever we click outside of that model, we want to close the model. So we're gonna pass the state setter to the model. It's gonna receive that right here. And that is of type dispatch set state action action and a boolean value. So let's import these types from React. Right there. We're receiving a setter function and now inside of the model we can use the user on click outside. We don't need it there anymore. And we're gonna have the text as a ref, right? Because every time we click outside the text, then we want stuff to happen. Use ref. Let's say text ref. And it's gonna be initialized as null. And then because the text is an h3, then it's gonna be an HTML heading element. Okay, let's assign the ref to the h3, like that. And use on click outside is gonna run whenever we click outside of the text ref. And then as a handler, we're gonna have a function that sets model open to false. Now, we don't need the handler there anymore. Let's save that. And well, we still need to open the model. Let's set it to true by default. So it's gonna be open. And now if we click outside of the text, the model will close, but if we click the text, nothing will happen. Perfect. And that is probably the custom hook I've used the most in my production projects, the use on click outside one. I really hope those two hooks will help you in your next project. I hope you found this video useful. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video. Bye bye.